welcome to DACOM Digital. It's time to listen to the latest crypto and DeFi market integrity news and enlightening interviews with industry thought leaders. Welcome everyone to another episode of DACOM Digital, uh, the podcast where we give the stage to the builders, movers, and shakers of a safe and regulated crypto and DeFi ecosystem. And today I have the absolute pleasure of hosting Jessica Murray, who is the Chief Compliance Officer of FTX Digital Markets, or FDM in short. FTX is an entity for global markets. Without further ado, Jessica, welcome and uh, good to have you here. To sit with you um, on this uh, podcast today and sharing my experiences and, um, in the crypto space to date. Hey, uh, the pleasure and uh, the pleasure and honor is all ours. Uh, thank you for taking the time. I know how busy we, you are. Um, so I guess just to get us started, I never heard an uninteresting story of how, of how someone uh, got into the crypto space. And I know you've, you've spent uh, you know, a bunch of time uh, in traditional markets and in other places before. So would you mind sharing a little bit about what brought you here and what has been your experience? Absolutely. And it has been, it has been a very interesting journey, to say the least. Um, I would say my journey started out, I would say I had three career changes to start there first three career changes. Mm -hmm. I started in education I, uh, many years ago, teacher and guidance counselor when I came back from college initially. Oh, wow. And then, um, yep. And then a few years later, I transitioned into hospitality management, <laughs> where I worked on one of the largest resorts here in the Bahamas, the Bahama Resort. And I did some training and uh, um, some VIP service management for them. Well, anyone, anyone who attended FDM's Crypto Bahamas knows the Bahamas yes, very well. <laughs> very well, absolutely. Okay, and, yeah, I awesome. then trans and then I transitioned over um, uh, about seven years ago, eight years ago, around about there, into the financial services. And to be honest, I would say I, I stumbled upon the financial services, rather. I, I, I was studying law, and I was like, oh, you know, this should be, I, I can pivot my career again. And, and I um, stumbled into in um investment funds and I worked for one of our boutique investment um, fund administrators here, Genesis Fund Services. And that's where I got my start into the financial services and then eventually transitioned into compliance and I fell in love. And so that's how I got into compliance uh -huh. um, here. And then of course, making that transition into within the last few, two years rather, when I was introduced to crypto um, through some of our investment funds who were being onboarded onto Binance and Tether platforms at the time. And that sparked an interest into this space, what it was about. It's this new thing, you know, and how does this work with compliance? And that's where my um, interest was piqued. Wow. Well, to be honest, so, you know, we've spoken a few times, but I wasn't aware uh, of all of these details and it's fascinating. And you know what? And before we jump into some of the challenges, um, and opportunities you deal with, uh, you know, at FDM. I'm curious to ask you: Do you find that uh, working in compliance, your experience as an educator, is relevant? Because I feel like, especially in crypto, uh, you know, so much of risk monitoring is about educating users, educating regulators, etc. So I'm just curious if there's a connection there, uh, as far as you absolutely, see. absolutely, there's been a connection, and 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 kind of morphing that 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 part of my traditional days into crypto has been, I was a revolutionary in, in, in educating all the stakeholders and even the, the staff of, of, of the different entities on new regulatory updates, you know, trends in the space and all the things that comes along with that. So it has been, it has been um, definitely a transferable uh, skill that I was able to transfer into this space. Wow, amazing. And do you miss teaching sometimes? I used to do some teaching and I definitely miss it a little bit, but there are other elements that I don't. <laughs> Absolutely. And I, and, I, and I think my sentiments are exactly the same. There are some elements I miss, but um, I, I think what's working in, in this space and, and um, being at the forefront of crypto compliance and, and seeing how it's evolving. And, and I, I think that is even, that's, I'm a student now. I'm a learner. Yeah. Absolutely. Got it. Yeah, it makes total sense. Well, that is fascinating. So thank you for sharing all of that. And so <laughs> that journey led you to uh, your position today, which, uh, you know, my take on it is that you're building the, the, you know, the risk and compliance program for one of the most, the largest, most influential and most important, uh, you know, crypto platforms in the world. Uh, and, uh, you know, so uh, I, I hope that uh, I hope that description makes sense to you. Um, and I'd love to hear a little bit about, uh, you know, uh, your day-to-day -day and what, what are some of the 
challenges uh, that you find in building a comprehensive compliance program and really and really constantly advancing market integrity and and and, and protection of of users uh, in your day to day absolutely i i i would say anna that when i when i first came into fdm um the, I, I was pleasantly surprised. I was shocked. Mm-hmm. I, I think they had a really robust compliance system um, program once I came in. And so um, as I navigated and maneuvered through, through through what existed, I was pleasantly surprised. There wasn't a lot of work that had to be done. Um, and there were just small, from, it really, the work really came from the regulatory standpoint, because again, it was, you know, now being a regulated space. But I was really impressed that that they had a really solid infrastructure in place. And of course, SPF leading this charge, you know, he's, he's very compliance thinking. He's, he, he's always thinking about the regulatory space and how FTX fits into this entire space. And so to have him lead the helm and, and it, it made my job easier. I think we, we, I mentioned this to you before, it made my job so much easier to have that, that, that culture from the head infiltrate through the organization. So that has been very breath refreshing it's been very refreshing that's how i would describe and and you you know i'm so happy to to hear you say that um because you know i find you know we i we find ourselves in conversations with regulators or 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 just people who are skeptic about crypto all the time and one thing that's really important for me to constantly convey is is just how much commitment there is to compliance and market integrity and 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 that the industry is not what it was three four years ago this idea of a wild west uh you know without naming any names but many of the kind of market surveillance compliance programs we work teams we work with are often larger than than some of the uh, the compliance programs at traditional institutions so uh, uh you know it's really interesting to hear about it from your perspective yeah and, and i would even add here a uh, hand that that having having partner with with, with with service providers like Solidus Labs, you know, really to add that value to to what we offer in in our compliance program, you know, market integrity for investor protection from a regulatory standpoint, I, I think all of that combined, you know, really creates a robust compliance program. And so I, you know, thank you to Solidus Labs for being partnering with us and bringing that that automation and 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 you know having all of those other moving parts come together. Thank you. That's very kind of you. And of course, uh, you know, we, I personally really enjoy this constant process where there's a constant effort to optimize how a compliance program should work, uh, you know, effectively in crypto and with regulation changing and with the markets constantly changing. It's, 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 a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a constant work in progress with a ton of moving pieces. And I, you know, I've got to see, uh, I've got to visit uh, your offices and see how yes. your team is dealing with it. And it's just inspiring. Um, so let me let me ask you a little bit more specifically. So first, I'm kind of curious. At the time, it was very and, and you're uh, it's important to say a, a Bahamian native. Um, yes. At the time, I remember it made a lot of headlines when SBF uh, announced FTX uh, Global Markets announced that they're going to be regulated in the Bahamas. I'm curious a little bit for your take on how has it affected uh, you know your your work on building the compliance program, specifically being regulated in the Bahamas for. You know, others who are trying to think where should they should get regulated, or or just about building their programs. Absolutely, and so I would say, for FDM, you know, for FDM, it's been SBS made that, that big announcement uh, that Bahamas would be the headquarters, and and they came to the Bahamas, being in a regulated jurisdiction and licensed, you know, under the you know, as a vast virtual asset service provider under the Digital Assets and Registered Exchange Act of twenty twenty, have I, in my opinion, have only strengthened. I made FTX um, compliance program more robust and, and made them even more viable in this space. Um, I would say um, when FTX made that, made that announcement to make the Bahamas' headquarters, other exchanges now, are now looking at this space as a viable option. Mm-hmm. Um, Tanya McCartney, um, who's the CEO of the Bahamas Financial Services Board, she always, you know, in her, one of her mantras, she, also, she always make mention that the Bahamas is the clear choice as an international financial center. And so for me, I'll, I think I'll even take that a bit further and say that the Bahamas is a clear choice for the virtual asset service providers and other crypto um, natives and service providers who want to come from this space. And, uh, and they will find, you know, to add that with, of course, the people, the, ta- the local talent pool, the climate, I think it's, it's a win-win situation. I'm sure that's very helpful for a lot of people who are listening. Um, so thank you for that. And I guess 
Uh, just, just in general, you know, many of our listeners are, are working themselves on, in, in crypto firms building compliance programs. Do you have kind of any general best practices or things to think about and kind of focus on for other uh, compliance practitioners in the space? Yes. So I would, I would, I would, I think one of the best practices that I have found is, in my experience, is building a, 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 a compliance team, building a knowledgeable compliance team. And, mm-hmm. and you know, your, your compliance program is only as good as the people that you have involved and overseeing it, right? So for right. me to build that team with a t- an able team with the expertise to combat whatever threats that we're going to have in this space, I think that's key. I think for me, another another one would be um, having a comp- comprehensive risk and a s- risk assessment, right? And this mm-hmm, basically, mm-hmm. you know, encompasses, you know, your, your KYC, email procedures, your verification procedures, um, and of course, regulatory awareness. I would also clump into that, you know, understanding the regulators' expectations and being able to anticipate those regulatory changes, I think is a is another good practice for crypto com, um, crypto compliance practitioners. And of course, I would like to, the third point I would say is integrating compliance technology within your compliance processes. You know, this is essential. You know, auto, having automated, especially in our space, is very voluminous, right? And so right. having the automation of these processes enhances speed and accuracy um, in our processes, especially on the client due diligence side and the transaction monitoring. So I, I would say those things. It's eye-opening to me in some way, and I'm sure it is for many in the space. I particularly appreciate the fact that you started with people and finished with technology uh, because they are two very important things. But I, I completely agree that any company is as strong as its people, and it's definitely true in compliance. Um, and you know, and for us as a kind of as a technology provider, we always try to think how to empower the people who are behind, Absolutely. who are using it, right? Um, anyway, but that's obviously a, a critical uh, uh, intersection that you're pointing out. So, so Jessica, as, as we're coming to a close here, we try to keep this uh, between 15 and 20 minutes, um, even though I could have continued the, the conversation for, for an hour at least. I got to visit your offices twice, once during Crypto Bahamas and once uh, before when we had an on-site. And the dynamic uh, with, between FTX as a company and the Bahamas is fascinating. Uh, you know, it's really, it's hard to miss everyone in, on the island that I met almost. I told him I'm here and I work in crypto, we immediately said FTX. Um, <laughs> it's very clear that a lot of the team is local. Um, and in fact, I remember speaking to a member of your team who came back to the Bahamas, I think specifically for the opportunity. So I'm just curious yeah. to ask you as, as, a, as a Bahamian native, what's your take on it? Um, uh, you know, how is it perceived in the Bahamas? Uh, because, because it's just really interesting to see when you're there. Yeah, um, you know, it, I mean, and I, I, I try to put it into words, um, but my initial reaction would be it's been mind-blowing, mind-blowing. As a, as a local, um, mind-blowing. But, but this, this, this experience with FDX and, and, and how they made the impact in this country has been phenomenal. I mean, one, for, for, for the locals who are employed here to be a part of the crypto space. I mean, right. this is new. This is this is new. This is new in the Bahamas. This is new in the Caribbean at large. But having the opportunity to be at the forefront of crypto compliance for myself and for the other locals who are have who have been engaged as part of the compliance team, and the exposure to the industry professionals, to the service providers like yourself, to colleagues, you know, experts in their field, has been an has been. I mean, just mind blowing. And learning from these people and gleaning from them, it, 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 you know, these are some of the smartest people that I, I, I think I've ever in, in, interacted mm. with. And they're, they're all so young. But it has been a mind-blowing experience. But, but specifically as it relates to the Bahamas and um, how, you know, the impact that SPF and FTM has left, you know, SPF has given, SPF has given so much to the Bahamas and to the Bahamian people. I, I mean... We're getting ready to build our new um, campus in the next um, 24 months. You know, this will be this will house our colleagues from the local local colleagues and those from around the world. This project, I believe, is estimated to be some 60 million and wow. will significantly um, boost our construction economy here in the Bahamas and employ Bahamians. You know, we we see ourselves as good corporate citizens, and we we, we do our part to support the local and international initiatives that lend themselves to the mission and values of FTX. Mm-hmm. Um, to date, we've injected some 15 million into local organizations wow. 
wow. and which which addresses hunger, homelessness, food insecurity, education, technology, the empowerment of women, children, and issues of climate change and the environment. Mm. And we will, and we will invest an additional ten million in entrepreneurs and organizations locally with bold ideas, innovative thinking, and um, visionary leadership. That will soon be the FTX Bahamas Ventures Fund. So, I mean, and, and the list goes on, but those are some of the big ones that, that you know, are so, so much more prominent in the community. So you can tell just by that alone what some, you know, the impact. And the Bahamas, you know, visiting is a very small island, you know, so the impact is very, very, um, it's been immense by SBA. But everyone knows FTX, everyone knows SBF, and the impact is they have made on this country. Uh, that's uh, and I have to I have to second that you know again just visiting a couple of times you know I felt it immediately um, you know yeah. the, the the crypto and the FTX spirit in the Bahamas and it's yes. so it's so wonderful to hear about it from your perspective because obviously always with tech and with you know and you know with uh, with com- with you know kind of big companies coming to smaller countries there's this question of how much. How much does it actually benefit, uh, you yes. know, uh, the, lo- the the local population? How much does it actually benefit, you know, not just kind of the, the top of the, uh, you know, the, the 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 cream of the crop of developers, yeah. and, and et cetera, um, and 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 it's just really remarkable to see to see it taking place as a strategy that's continuous and forward looking with FTX in the Bahamas and by the way beyond, um, I yes. would say. Um, so it's really, you know, um, you know. It does, it, it's really, really, really interesting to see, and I recommend uh, going to the Bahamas and visiting FTX. Uh, <laughs> yes. It's also, it's also just a, you know, uh, you know, uh, th- that's one work trip you can't complain about, right? Going to the Bahamas. <laughs> Absolutely. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Absolutely. Um, so, so look, we're getting to the end of our time. Jessica, uh, is there anything else you want to add? Uh, that was just been a pleasure um, spending some time with you here, and. Um... I appreciate the invite. Thank you again for finding the time. Uh, it's a very busy job to 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 run the compliance program for uh, a, 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 an exchange as big and influential as FTX. So I know how busy you are. So thank you for finding the time, Jessica. It was a huge pleasure, and I look forward to having you again at some point. Thanks, Han. This episode of Dacom Digital was brought to you by Solidus Labs. Thank you for tuning in. Don't forget to subscribe and be sure to join the conversation by following us on LinkedIn and Twitter.